Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Can we put our hands together? Come on, can we stand up on our feet and give God praise for the great things he's done? Oh. Hallelujah. We bless his name on this morning. Anybody excited just to be in the house of the Lord? Come on, are excited just about everything that he's going to do for you? Hallelujah. We give him honor. We give him praise. Can we stand up on our feet? It's a real simple song. It just says our God is big and strong and mighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Everybody put your hands together. Hey. Come on, let me see you put your hands together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah.
Let's go to him and pray and get it. Amen. Hallelujah. To the God of grace, to the God of mercy, to the God of new beginnings. God, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you, God, because we understand, God, it's by your mercy and your grace that we are not consumed, God. God, we thank you for just showing up in this space, God. God, we invite you in, not only this space, but into our hearts and our minds, God. Have your divine way, God. Show up and show out in this place this morning, God. God, allow us to take in your spirit, God, and push out everything that does not line up with your word, oh God. God, we pray in the name of Jesus, God, for the word that is going to come forth on this morning, God. We pray, God, that we would allow ourselves to take it in and to hear it, God, but not only be hearers of the word, God, but do that which your word instructs us to do, God. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that every need is met today, God. God, God, that every soul that is downcast, God, that they will begin to rejoice in you, God, because this is the day that the Lord has made. And God, we have decided in ourselves to rejoice and be glad in it. So God, we ask you to have your divine way. God, we ask that you do what no other power can do. God, we ask, God, that you would just come on in, God, and make every crooked place straight, God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we'll be so mindful to give your name to praise. God, we'll be so mindful to give you the glory. God, we'll be so mindful, God, to lift our hands in adoration to you, God. We'll be so mindful to lift our voices and shout hallelujah. 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 Amen. Come on, continue to put those blessed hands together. Come on, anybody excited about what the Lord is going to do on this morning? Come on, anybody excited to lift him up high? Come on, and stand up on your feet and give God praise with us a real simple song. Come on, simply says, we can't stop calling you. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. And everybody say, oh, oh. Everybody say, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Can't stop one more time, everybody. Everybody say, oh, 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 oh. hey. Yeah. Can't stop calling. Oh, 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 oh. Hey. Everybody 
Jesus, Jesus, something about the name Jesus. We can't stop calling. Come on, community of hope. There's power in the name. Jesus, 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 when there's sickness in your body. Jesus, 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 when you need comfort. Jesus, 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 when you need peace of mind. Jesus, 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 I don't know about you, but there's something about the name of Jesus. If you need Jesus, why don't you give him some glory on this morning? If you need Jesus, why don't you give him some praise on this morning? If you stand in expectation of something, why don't you call on the name of Jesus this morning? Jesus, 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 Jesus. had it not been. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Woo, give him some glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, I love you, Reverend Doctor. You've been so much to me, and I can call you when I need something, but when I call on the name of Jesus, woo, things change. When I call on the name of Jesus, woo, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, my God, oh. Jesus, 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 hey. good morning, community of hope. Now, don't y'all make Reverend Bill look at me crazy because y'all don't get this part right. It is time, it is time. For I just said it is time for scripture of the week. We, we. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Where are my study strong people at? And online, online, if you online and you study strong, drop that in the chat for me. Those who are going to be reciting this week's scripture, start making your way, start making your way. And, and we're um, even as they're beginning to wake, make their way, next week's scripture is going to come from Isaiah, the 54th chapter, the 14th verse. I'm not going to tell y'all what it says right now because I know how y'all do. But who's volunteering to do scripture of the week next week? I said, who's volunteering to do scripture of the week for next week? Let me see your hands, hands. CJ, we got you. Sister Chambers, we got you. Okay, thank you. That's only three. That's only three. Are we not studying? I'm going to start volunteering some people. Sister Dawn, thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Who else? Who else do we have? Who else do we have? Volunteers for next week's scripture of the week, Isaiah 54, 14. In righteousness you will be established. Tyranny will be far from you. You will have nothing to fear. Terror will be far removed. It will not come near you. I need some more volunteers. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Shirk. That's only four. That's only four. Can we get six? Can we get six? I need two more. I need two more. Uh-huh. Let me see. Let me see. Let me, who, who? Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Sister. Okay, six, seven, eight, nine. God bless you. Ten. Look at God. Look at God. And what is it? Isaiah. There we go. Okay, y'all ready? Ooh, it's a whole bunch of y'all. Come on, gather around, gather around. I like that. Y'all yeah. want me to sing it too? Go ahead. Yes, yes. Scripture of the week, 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 week. Okay. <laughs> All right. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yes. Okay. Yes. One, two, three. Romans 12, 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Hey, on the first try, y'all give him a hand, give him a hand, give him a hand. What you got, what you got, what you got? Happy birthday, G-Mo.
Oh, happy birthday, Sister Ravonda. All right, all right, all right. So, so how y'all rocking it today? How y'all rocking today? Where you, where you, where you going? Where you going? Oh, okay. Oh, oh, y'all must be about to get serious with it. Okay. All right, let me step aside. All right, what y'all, what y'all want? Just, yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead, just walk it out for them. folks online we will be looking for your videos we will be looking for you to drop it in the chat amen amen, amen. all right do we have any first time visitors with us on today if you will hop up to your feet and stay standing we'd appreciate it you don't have to speak look at God. hallelujah hey auntie <laughs> Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please remain standing. We are the community of Hope AME Church where everybody has a chance. And our senior pastor, the Reverend Tony Lee, has us living not off of a motto, not off of a saying, but off of the way that we actually believe and live that you are in the right place at the right time to become all that God has called you to become. We don't care what you did last night. I messed that all up, didn't I? I said it with my feet. I said it how I feel it. But we're going to say it right, though, because, because you know what? Because someone told me that, that, that what we say in that model is something that has saved them on many of occasions. So sometimes we just, you know, we like, oh, we messed it up. Ha, ha, ha. But they told me how important it is to them. So let me try that one more time. We are the community of Hope AME Church where everybody has a chance. We don't care who you are. We don't care what you've done. We don't care who you did it with. We don't care if you did it last night or if you woke up doing it this morning. But when you get here, you are in the right place at the right time to become all that God has called you to be. And we believe that God has a blessing with your name. What church? Slam on it. So community of hope, let's give our visitors a hand clap of praise and let's stretch our hands toward them so we can have a word of prayer with them. Amen. Gracious God, we come to you right now with thankful hearts, Lord God. We thank you for these brothers and sisters who are here for the first time. We thank you for those who are tuning in online for the first time, Lord God. Not to see what we are about, but to see who you are about. Lord God, we just ask that you bless their lives, that you meet them at their every place of need. We ask that you touch each and every person connected to them. We thank you, Lord God, for the testimonies that are going to come from them and their families because of what they received here on today. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. So, our pastor will be coming with some other announcements, but right now we want to make sure that you all are aware that we are about to be, how old y'all? 18 years old. Can somebody give God a hand clap of praise for that? Let's not take it lightly that Community of Hope Church is going to be 18 years old. Let's not take for granted the church that started in a nightclub is going to be 18 years old. Let's not take for granted the church that everyone calls that go-go church is going to be 18 years old. Y'all not, do y'all hear what I'm saying to you? Let's not take for granted 
the arguments that some of you have had with your co-workers in the barbershop at the beauty salon because you go to that church is going to be 18 years old. Let's not take for granted the people that have been fed. Let's not take for granted the addictions that have been overcome. Let's not take for granted the minds that have been saved because this church is about to be 18 years old. And so, he is the pastor of the church that is about to be 18 years old, the Reverend Tony Lee. Y'all give him a hand clap of praise as he goes before God on this morning. Come y'all give God a hand clap of praise in the house today. We're excited for all that the Lord is doing. Amen, somebody? Amen, amen. We're just excited about all the Lord is doing and how God is blessing. And we are excited because I'm back. Amen. Uh, amen, somebody. We just came back from annual conference. Amen. Amen. Watch an annual conference, and we are glad. So you see the ministers jumping up. All oh, y'all like, you're supposed to be back, fool. Amen. Amen. Uh, but the reality is because we're AME, that the bishop could have made a decision, been like, yeah, you're going somewhere else. Uh, but we want to thank God. They ain't made no decision for 18 years. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 So we're grateful to God to be back in the house. We are also excited because we've had some movement, and we thank God for how God has blessed. We want to thank God for how uh, Minister Rose Sharon Ingram is now Reverend Rose Sharon Ingram. Amen. Come on, give it up. Stand up, Reverend Rowe. Stand up, Reverend Rowe. Somebody shout, howdy, Reverend. Amen. Minister, that's now Reverend Rowe. She was ordained. And Minister Daniel Pollard is now Reverend Daniel Pollard. Amen. Amen. We thank God for Reverend Dan. And we want to thank God that Reverend Keisha Agunbeck is now an elder of the church. Amen, somebody. Amen. She is now, amen, an itinerant elder. She now has the highest, uh, the, the, she has the highest credentialing the AME Church has. Amen, somebody. Amen. She the same kind of reverend I am. Amen, somebody. She, so we just thank God. We are just so excited for what the Lord is doing and how God has been blessing our ministers to grow. Turn to somebody say, we growing, y'all. We growing, y'all. We getting... We get bigger, we get older. And we do want to thank God for the sons and daughters and even the grandchildren of Community of Hope were blessed uh, during this annual conference season. We're grateful Dr. Folsom was reappointed to his church. Pastor Chris was reappointed to his church. We want to thank God that Reverend Aaron Tinch is now the pastor of the New Hope AME Church in Waldorf, Maryland. Amen. And we are so grateful. And we want to thank God that one of our grandsons in ministry, one of Dr. Folsom's sons in ministry, uh, uh, the, uh, the Reverend Devin Martin, is now the pastor of the Bethel AME Church in Cambridge, Maryland. Amen, somebody? In Cambridge, Maryland. Amen. And so we're just so excited for how all that the Lord is doing and how God is blessing in such a wonderful, wonderful way and how God is growing us all up. Church, say amen. And we also want to thank God, all of our other ministers uh, who are in the AME Board of Examiners moved up. Amen, somebody. They moved up another year. Amen. They moved up uh, another year. And so we want to thank God. So that means that Reverend Kyla Haynes uh, will be in position next year to become an itinerant elder. Amen. Amen. So we are grateful. God, and we're just so excited. And, and most of all, we're excited. Minister Kim Yada is now officially, officially, officially in the flow. Amen, somebody? And so we want to thank God for Minister Kim Yada was officially in the flow, and everybody was able to move up, and we're just grateful to God. Now, I know y'all done heard the announcements. Uh, y'all make sure to get your friends, your family, your neighbor, your uncle, and them. Amen, somebody? We turn in 18 next week. Amen? We turn in 18 next week. And so we are excited. Uh, for the Lord and how the Lord is going to be moving as we turn 18. Did the Hope Battalion talk about men's discipleship? Amen. Amen. Are they, is somebody coming to talk about men's discipleship or they just want me to say it? All right. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to keep talking because I don't want you running up them steps. A amen, somebody. Amen. Just, oh, well, all right now. Well, church, say amen, Reverend Bruce. Reverend Bruce ran up the young adult steps, amen? Amen. Y'all know them steps is for those of us who are like young adults no more, amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. So all my brothers, we are starting our real talk on uh, this too.
this Tuesday we'll be having our Real Talk with the Brothers of Hope Battalion. We had an introduction last week, but we're going to be going over the first two chapters of Pastor's book, and it's going to bless your life. If you did not make it on our Zoom, see me after service in the back, and I'll get you the link. It's a blessed time, brothers. We had about 30 brothers. We're looking for at least 20 more. We want to finish up with 50 strong brothers. So meet me out in the lobby if you want to get signed up. God bless you. Come on, give it up for our men's ministry and the wonderful work they're doing. Amen. Amen. We're just so grateful to God. Brothers, I promise you uh, that your life can be different. Amen. Uh, but you need to get the tools to be different. It's not just enough to kind of want to grow, uh, but you have to get the tools to grow. Uh, it's a lot of times that we are uh, in the middle of a war and we have no weapons. Amen. And so with, this is how you get your weapons. This is how you get equipped. Uh, years ago, my goodness, 30-something years ago, uh, me and Reverend Bill were in a discipleship group at Ebenezer AME Church, and it literally shifted our life because even though we wanted to do right, we didn't have the tools to live right. And so we want to thank God as ministries like this to help you to get the tools to live better. The other thing is, it's not a whole bunch of stuck-up brothers who um, ain't never been done nothing. Amen, somebody? We want to thank God. Anybody ever been to a kind of a church in which it didn't seem like anybody there you could relate to? Okay. Let me... Anybody here ever been to a church you didn't? Anybody from my generation, you'd be talking about the chapter three, they ain't never heard of it. You'd be talking about triples, the black hole. You'd be talking about essence, and they thought it was a perfume. A amen, somebody. You'd be talking about junkyard, and they think you're going to get something from an actual junkyard. Oh, I can't get nobody up. You're talking about experience unlimited, and they think you're talking about your resume. A amen, somebody. No, no, no. But, but you need some folks who, are, are, who, who have lived life like you, amen, and who are just regular brothers trying to be better. Ain't nobody trying to act like they're so super holier than now and like they better than you, but everybody just trying uh, to live right by God. Church, say amen. 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 So we're excited. Brothers, y'all need to make sure to hook up with Reverend Bruce so y'all can get connected. If you're excited for the opportunity to give, won't you give God a hand clap of praise? Come on, won't you stand all over the church, all that are able we do give God glory for the opportunity to give today. We thank God uh, that you can't beat God given no matter how hard you try. Amen. You can't beat God given no matter how hard you try. And we are grateful to God that if uh, you've been blessed to give, that means you've been blessed to what? To receive. And every good and perfect gift does come from the Lord. There are many ways you can give. My little sign ain't up today. Oh, it is. It's over there in the cut. Amen, somebody. And you can give digitally. Amen. We're on Givelify app. Community of Hope, we got our own apps. You can give there. Uh, you can give on Cash App, dollar sign, give COH. We want to thank God for everyone who's uh, joining us and viewing us um, in, in whatever virtual fashion you are. You can give right there online. Uh, but we thank God and we are grateful to God uh, because we believe that God has get, allowed us to be stewards over what God has already given us. So it's not that we made it, it's that God gave it. Amen. Come on, let's look to the Lord in the posture of prayer. God, in Jesus' name, we do thank you. Thank you, God, for this day that you us. Thank you, God, for uh, your people. And God, we thank you, God, for these gifts. Now, God, we ask that you would bless them, God, to the upbuilding of your kingdom. Bless their lives as they give. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And amen. And we thank God for now the voice of hope. Now, if I could have my outside sections, this section, this section, turn to my left and your right, turn to my left and your right. Follow the directions of our greeters from the back to the front. Amen, somebody. And then the middle section will go. God bless you. Voices of hope. God bless you today. Here we go, small spot. Listen up and let me tell you. Listen up and let me testify how God's been good to me. Oh, oh. He ain't good for me time after time, even when I didn't believe. And when my life took a real bad turn, took a real bad turn, he turned it for my good. And we got me over to say.
Come on, somebody give God another hand clap of praise in the house today. Amen, amen, amen. We are just so grateful for all that the Lord has been doing. Uh, even when God was doing all that stuff at annual conference, we want to thank God for the Yes Fest. Amen, what's happening? The Yes Fest was happening yesterday. Amen. Hope and Action and Community of Hope who came together and were at the Suitland Community Center. And we want to thank God. About 100 young people came out yesterday. Amen. 100 young people came out yesterday and were able to get all kinds of things. We have young people who have signed up now for classes on Saturdays, uh, whether it's entrepreneurship, real estate, um, which is a range of classes they'll be taking on Saturdays. And so we're excited. All the classes are full. Amen, somebody. All the classes are full that have been signed up. And so we're just so grateful to God uh, for all that God is doing through Community of Hope, through Hope in Action, and just excited about how the Lord is moving. And what a wonderful, wonderful blessing. Mr. G, good to see you, brother. Mr. G, good to see you. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful celebration of life we had for Mr. G's son. Amen. Uh, this past week, and so it's on, and we continue to keep you lifted in our prayers, brother, and we thank God for you. We also want to uh, continue to keep Sister Jazz, uh, Jasmine in our prayers, amen. Her home going for her sister is tomorrow, amen, somebody, and we are going to have some kind of a time. So please keep the Page family in your prayers as well as the family of Sister Tatiana Cooks at a home going. The, um, the family of Sister Tatiana Cooks, her home going is this Thursday. And so please keep uh, that family and the whole uh, um, and, 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 and the whole Gross family in your prayers. Um, and also we want to keep lifted up our Sister Deshaun Houston. Amen. Uh, keep our dear sister lifted up uh, that she found out on her way home from church uh, that her husband had been in a motorcycle accident and it died. Amen. And so we want to make sure to be lifting her and her family up. And my God, Jesus, she was here for church last Sunday, found out tragedy on the way home from church, and is here for church this Sunday. Yeah. Amen, somebody? Yeah. Amen, somebody. Because, because we walk grief together. Somebody say together. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And we are in this together. And so uh, we ask that you would keep her in your presence. As a matter of fact, uh, just stretch your hands to Sister Paige, to Sister, to Sister Houston, um, and to, to all of those, to Brother Mr. G, to all of those who are, who are grieving. And this, to the Gross family, amen, somebody, to the Gross family, to all of those who are grieving um, in this season. We thank God for Reverend Dr. Felicia, who will be preaching the home going of loved one this Thursday, amen. And we're just praying for her. We're just praying, we're praying, we're praying, amen. Uh, that we celebrate with each other, but we also grieve with each other, amen. God, in Jesus' name, we come right now uh, asking God not uh, for you to make sense of it because some stuff just doesn't make sense. But God, we come right now, God, asking you to hold us through it. God, in Jesus' name, Jesus said that he would not leave us comfortless, but he would send the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And we ask God that your Holy Spirit would comfort these, your people, in the name of Lord Jesus, these who stand, God, are grieving the loss of loved ones. 
We are believing, God, you shall walk this journey with them. And we thank you, God, they don't have to walk this by themselves uh, because we are walking along with them. But we're not walking it, God, saying that we know exactly what to say because it's not about what we say. But, God, we're walking it with them because we're present with them in their journey. So, God, in Jesus' name, help us to love them and help them to feel your comfort. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, somebody give God a hand clap of praise if you believe God is a comforter. God can bring comfort along your journey. We thank God for the voices of hope that shall lead us in our sermonic selection and in his preaching time.
today. Now come on, somebody magnify him in the house today. I feel like God wants to touch somebody before a sermon is even said. Come on, give God glory in the house today. Help us set the atmosphere for your neighbor's breakthrough. You may come in and everything is going all right in your life, but your neighbor is going through hell and high water. Help us set the atmosphere for your neighbor's breakthrough. You might as well turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, things are cool right now, but I'm going to give God glory for you right now because I, I, I don't know what you came in here with. And the truth be told, I know that you don't look like what you've been through. Have I got somebody up in here that will help us magnify Jesus up in this house today? Because the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of God's people. In other words, that God will sit down in the middle of your praise and, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so I, I dare somebody, I dare somebody, I, I, I de triple dare you to help us set the atmosphere so that God can come and sit down with us, so that God can tabernacle with us, so that God can come dwell with us and sit there's healing in God's presence there. There's deliverance in God's presence there. There's joy in God's presence there. There's comfort in God's presence there. There's peace in God. Have I got somebody in the house today that doesn't mind magnifying the Lord with me? Let us exalt his name.
Yeah, 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 yeah. Baba, see, check it. Go, shout out, Baba, see. Woo, glory. Woo, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Sorry, because somebody, what you need is on the other side of this praise. Your breakthrough is on the other side of this praise. And I know you're tired. I'm tired too. But the Lord is whispering in my ear, if you'll just press your way through, good God Almighty, to the other side. I know you don't feel like shouting. I know you don't feel like saying thank you because you really don't feel like you got nothing to say thank you about. But if you can just give God a thank you on credit. If you can just give God a thank you on layaway. If you can just give God a praise in advance. Believing that God is still able. And even though you don't feel like it right now, you say, I trust God. Good God Almighty. That all that's going on in my life, I still trust God. I still believe God. I still believe God's a way maker. I still believe God's a heart fixer. I still believe God's a mind regulator. I still believe God's a doctor in the sick room. I still believe God's a lawyer in the court. Have I got somebody in here that can give God a I still? Come on, give God another hand clap of praise in the house today. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I still believe. I still. I still. I still. I still believe. Lord, have mercy. I still. in my eyes, I still believe. Heartbroken, I still. The doctor saying one thing, but I still believe for the other. I still. Amen. Luke, the 24th chapter, Luke, the 24th chapter, even as you're turning, I do want to send a virtual shout out. We want to send a shout out to the Britton family, to Brother Leon Britton. Send a shout out to the Britton family, to Brother Leon Britton, uh, Sister Crystal, Britton Hollingsworth, and the family. We, they are in the hospital room right now. Uh, the, uh, last Sunday, some of our ministers were there with them. One of our ministers was there with them as they took Brother Britton off the of life support. Uh, Sister Britton's father took him off the of life support. The doctor said uh, that he had probably minutes hours. And it's a whole week later, amen. Um, he's taking his time to go home, amen. Amen, taking his time to go home. We want the Britain family to hear from us our prayers and our strength in this moment. Luke, 24th chapter, the ninth verse, Luke, the 24th chapter. Night first, when they came back from the tomb, I'm sorry, before I start preaching, don't Reverend Dr. Nancy look flying on her, aka? Yeah. Amen. I'm sorry, Mama, you're just looking so fly. I just, 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 you can't shout out your own mama before preaching. You ain't no kind of preacher, amen. Amen. You ain't no kind of preacher, and the Lord ain't with you, amen. 
<laughs> Luke, the 24th chapter, the ninth verse, Luke 24, 9. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the 11 and to all the others. It was Mary, Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and others with them who told them, who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. And he went away wondering to himself what had happened. He went away wondering to himself what had happened. My brothers and my sisters, I, 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 am, I was supposed to have started it last week. And last week, we actually started this series of more with worship and exhortation. Uh, we are here in this series uh, that I'll be in for the next few weeks called Next. Preparing for God's best in a season of transition. Next, preparing for God's best in a season of transition. And, and today's sermon, uh, today's sermon in the midst of that next series, uh, the title will be Your Next Chapter Can Be Your Best Chapter. Your next, come on, let's look to the Lord. God, in Jesus' name, thank you. Put your hand in your power. Have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Your next chapter can be your best chapter. So the Lord laid on my heart that it was necessary to start talking to you all, talking to us, um, about how to prepare for God's best in a season of transition. I mean, is there anybody here that you kind of have felt like you're in a season of transition? Anybody here that you felt a little bit twixt in between? that you're not there, but you're not where you used to be. Hey, have I got a witness in the house today? Uh, the reality is that you are not um, in the place you used to be. You are not the person you used to be. You are not uh, walking in all that you used to walk in. But uh, the fact of the matter is you are not fully where you believe God is taking you. You're in a period of transition. Uh, that you're between, that you're, that you're moving from one location to the other. You're between, that you are on the, the journey. You're between, that you feel something stirring in you. But a reality is you can't even totally put your finger on what the stirring is. You just know it's stirring. Have I got a witness in the house today? Is there anybody honest enough to admit uh, that the thing that is so challenging for you right now is that you know there is a next, but you don't know where next is? Uh, that you know there is a next, but you don't know how to get to next because you've never been to next. You've never gone to where you're going, and so you don't really. Is there anybody here that, that you're hoping somehow to put in the directions, but you don't even have the destination? It's a hard thing to put into GPS where you need to go when you don't have the direction. Is there anybody here that you don't even have the address for it? Amen, somebody. And, and, and so, and so it's, you're kind of driving you crazy sometimes, amen, because because you know that you need to put something into the GPS. Lord, have mercy. You know that you need to get somewhere, but you don't have the address of the somewhere you're headed to. Have I got at least one witness in the house today? And so it's got you feeling a little kind of off. Amen. Somebody's got you feeling a little bit of off kilter, a little discombobulated because you're clear that you're going somewhere. You are clear that where you are is not where you're supposed to stay. Is there somebody here that knows that about where you are? That where you are is not your destination, that where you are, that your current location is not your destination, but that God has something better for you. God has something greater for you. God has something farther along the line for you. And, and you're not sure what it is, but you know there is a is there. Amen. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, there's a is there. There's an is there. I, I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure where it is, but I know there is an is there. I wish I had somebody up in here that could grab a hold of that for yourself. Amen, somebody. There is and is there. Amen. And, and, and so the interesting thing, my brothers and my sisters, and, and what I feel like I'm led in, in these next few weeks to talk to us about is how to prepare for God's best in a season of transition. One of the challenges of transition 
is because you're not, uh, because you cannot find yourself to be settled where you are, uh, but you don't really know where you're going, that you can end up uh, settling into a, a, a season of, of just wandering and, 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 just, and, and just weaving and, and, and wandering along the way. Anybody here feel like you're just wandering aimlessly? Anybody here feel like for as much as you're trying to be focused that you don't seem to be uh, staying as focused as you would want to be focused, even though you know this is a season you need to be focused? Uh, I'm talking about, see, the, what happens is but because you know you're not supposed to be where you are, but you can't really pinpoint where you need to go, then you can end up uh, trying to, to know you need to be focused, but losing your focus because you're trying everything along the journey to try to see what fits. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me talk to these folks over here b b because y'all always got it going on. Amen, somebody? Uh, but the reality is, if I'm honest with you, there are moments in my life and moments along my journey that I got into trouble when I really was in transition. Okay, I'm... I'm, I'm. <laughs> you know the relationship you in right now is not it. You know God's got something better for you down the way. But you trying stuff in this club and you trying stuff in this club and you trying stuff in this DM and you trying stuff in this chat. Because you know you don't belong where you are, but you have not fully yet grabbed a hold of what you're going to. And so instead of being focused on God, just get me to wherever it is I need to go and seeking God for direction that you seek time to figure it out for yourself and trying whatever seems like it looks good and feels good, but everything that looks good and feels good ain't good. And, and so there's the need in the midst of transition, good God Almighty, to have focus. Focus when you don't know where you're going. Focus when you don't understand the destination. Focus enough to know I don't know where, but I do know who. And so even though I don't know where, I know that if there's anything I've got to do, I've got to lock in on God right now, good God Almighty. That now is not the time for me to be getting calls at one in the morning talking about what you're doing. What I'm doing, I'm praying. God bless you. You interrupted me and God. I'll holler. I'm sorry, I, that ain't even in my notes. I'm sorry, that ain't in my notes. I'm trying to help somebody right here. Because the enemy knows where you are is not where you belong. And the enemy knows that God's got something ahead for you. But the enemy knows if I can just keep you distracted long enough, you will miss what God has for you. Because God has something scheduled for you up ahead. And God right now has you on a need to know situation. And so you don't know what it is, but God is just telling you to take a step forward. Amen, somebody? That, that you don't know where it is, but God is just telling you now, go to the right. Amen, somebody? That God has given you enough directions for the moment, but because you don't know the destination, that you start wandering and you lose your focus and you get outside of what God is saying for your life and you end up missing the will of God for your life. Because you're wandering in the middle of transition. But I've come by to let you know that one of the things you got to do, Lord have mercy, is focus in transition. Oh, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at this scripture, I'm looking at the scripture, and I realize that the people of God were in the middle of a transition. Jesus, who they had been in ministry with for three years, who they thought to be the Messiah, the soon coming king has been crucified. He's dead. He's buried. And these sisters go to the tomb. Sisters go to the tomb and he's not there. And an angel tells him, we told you, he told you he was going to get up. 
And they go back and they tell the brothers, Lord have mercy. He's not there. He's up. They're in the middle of a, tra they're in the middle of a transition. But what does it mean uh, that they've been able to walk around and walk with power? They've been able to walk around and walk uh, with assurance. They've been able to walk around and they've been able to speak to the sick and the sick get healed. In Jesus' name, they've been able to speak to demons and demons um, people get delivered. In Jesus' name, they've been able to do signs and wonders. And they've been able day after day to go and sit at the feet of Jesus. And now Jesus is no longer there. The, the, the great leader who is showing them and teaching them about the kingdom of God, the great leader who, who is showing and teaching them about who they could become, the great leader who is showing them and teaching them that even though you're on the outskirts of society, that God's got to work for you in this kingdom. The great leader who is showing them and teaching them, and now their leader is gone. And they've got to figure out how to make it without Jesus. Is there anybody here that you feel like sometimes? That the people who had been your mentors, the people who had been the ones who are showing you the way, the people who had been the ones who had been kind of lifting you up, they're gone. And now you're trying to figure out how to make it. Grief can get you that way sometimes. That the loved one who had been there for you is gone. And, and you're trying to figure out how to be able to make it without them. The, 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 it can be that way when you're graduating from high school. It can be that way, young people, when, 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 when you're moving up out of the house and you're no longer with mom and dad. It can be that way when you're changing schools. It can be that way when you're shifting jobs. That, that what used to be your stability is no longer your stability. And you're trying to figure out how to be able to make it to where you've got. What am I going? What are we going to? To do without Jesus. They killed him in front of us. What are we going to do without Jesus? Here these sisters, they go and they go to the grave and they find out that Jesus is not there. They find out that, 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 that he is resurrected but, and yet they go back and they talk to the disciples and they let the disciples know what they've seen but nobody believes them because sometimes along your transition nobody will believe what you see even though you know you see what you saw. I'm talking about, they went to the tomb. The stone was rolled away. They went to the tomb. The, the tomb was empty. They went to the tomb. And the angels were there and told them that he was gone and been resurrected. They go back and, and they bear witness to what Jesus had already told them he was going to do. But nobody believed them because it sounded like nonsense. That's what the scripture said. It said that the men didn't believe them because it sounded like nonsense. Sisters, are you used to brothers telling you what you say sounds like nonsense? So, 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 are, are you used to knowing what to do? Are, are you knowing what the answer is? Are you used to knowing uh, what needs to happen in the situation uh, because of sexism and patriarchy? The brothers tell you you don't know what the heck you're talking about? And, 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 but, but I've come by to tell somebody today that just because it doesn't make sense to them doesn't mean it doesn't make sense. So I turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it makes sense. It makes sense. That, that just because they can't see what God is doing doesn't mean God's not doing something. Just because they can't believe God's not doing something that doesn't mean that God's not doing something. That, that, that every now and then in the midst of transition that God will do something and, and God will be doing a work in your life. And when you talk to people about it, it won't make sense to them. But that's because they're not faith people. That's because for as much as they want to believe what God is doing is so big that it goes beyond their realm of possibility. That, that for them, even though they heard Jesus say it, they needed to see it for themselves. And sometimes people can't get with you. Don't be mad at them because they can't get with you. But, but what God is doing is so incredible that the fact of the matter is they need to see it for themselves. But just because they need to see it for themselves does not mean you need to wait around for them to believe it for yourself. Is somebody up in here that God is doing a work in you, but because of who you used to be, because of what you've used to have done, because of where you've grown up, because of where you came from, because of the mistakes you've made, that people can't believe that God would be able to do what God is about to do in you and through you and for you. And so it makes no sense to them because they can't understand that God can reach down to the bottom. And you can say, I started from the bottom, but now I'm here. Have I got 
got somebody up in here that can say God is trying to do a work in me that sometimes I can't believe it but I've come by to tell you don't you sit and get down on yourself because they down on you but if you see it's God's hand you need to give God a praise right now for what God is doing and believe Lord have mercy Oh, but the second thing, the second thing is sometimes even when they see the evidence, they won't believe it. <laughs> Interesting thing for me is the Bible says that they didn't believe what the women said. But it's another thing not to believe it when you see the evidence. <sighs> because what I've come to realize is everybody can interpret evidence in their own way. And so you show them the evidence of what God is doing. And they still won't believe it because of their interpretation, Lord have mercy, of the evidence. Okay, let me help you. Let me show you this in the scripture. The, the, the Bible says that, that they said it to the men, and, and then it says that Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying there by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. He saw what the sister said. He saw the evidence of the miracle. But yet and still, it did not cause him to get to a place of belief. Even though he's, because he saw the evidence, but he did not get the word the sisters got. Okay, let, let me come back for you. When the sisters got to the tomb, the sisters were walking to the tomb. Y'all know the story. And the Bible says they were wondering how they were going to move out the stone. They got there, the stone had already been rolled away. They got to the tomb, the tomb was empty. They saw the strips of linen uh, that had been what Jesus had been wrapped up in, and they were sitting there. And But then there was uh, a, a angels, these white creatures, these bright, gleaming men who told them he's risen. So they got more than the evidence. They got a word. See, Evidence without a word is just CSI. <laughs> that you are trying to determine the meaning of the evidence. But evidence with a word yeah. is confirmation. Yeah. Oh, Lord, I'm trying, trying to help somebody in transition right now. Uh, be, 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 because you've been dealing with the evidence, but now you're getting the word. Lord, have mercy. I'm trying to. I, I'm going to show y'all how I saw this. So, man, them women was playing ball. The NCAA Women's Championship, South Carolina, Iowa. Most watched game and watched more than the brothers, blah, blah, blah. But what was interesting for me was even before the game, people were critiquing South Carolina's coach, Don Staley. Because every time she got up after every victory, she would give glory to God. I mean, every time, after every victory, she would give glory to God. She would be giving God praise and the people said, how can you pray? Shouldn't you kind of be quiet about this? Because other people may feel offended because of how you talk about your God. And Don Staley said, now you got to understand, my life is evidence. As a player, I got two Naismith Awards. As a coach, I got a bunch of Naismith Awards. That this season, Lord have mercy, everybody thought we were supposed to win it last season. But last season, we didn't win it. And all of our dogs ended up going away. And we had a whole new squad. But with the rebuilt squad, Lord have mercy. Is there somebody in the house today that, that when everybody expected you to win it, you lost? And, and you've been in the rebuilding season? 
and everybody was believing that was just going to be a rebuilding season, didn't expect you to get much out of it. Huh? Oh, but the Lord grabbed a hold of your rebuild huh? and made it a championship. Huh? The Lord took a hold of your rebuild. Lord, have mercy. Huh? And, and, and took you uh, to the heights you couldn't imagine. Huh? That this wasn't supposed to be the time. Huh? There were times before in your life huh? in which you should have had it better. Huh? There were times before in your life huh? in which your situation was better. Huh? There were times before in your life huh? in which your lifestyle was better. Huh? There was times before in your life huh? in which your hookups were better. Huh? Uh, but you lost in those times. Huh? And everybody looked at you huh? as a loser all year long. Huh? But you grabbed a hold of huh? a whole new crew. Huh? A new set of prayer partners. Huh? Some folks who believe like you. Huh? And where nobody else believed, huh? they grabbed a hold of the same belief. Huh? And because you knew what it was like huh? when God grabbed a hold of you huh? that you took what you had huh? and worked what you could huh? have I got anybody in here huh? that's been taking what you have huh? to work what you've got huh? and now you look up huh? and you're farther huh? than you ever dreamt or imagined huh? you're farther huh? than you could ever get by yourself huh? you're farther huh? than anybody could predict for you huh? and all you've got to say huh, is I give God glory huh, cause I've got evidence huh, and I've got the word huh, that the Lord huh, made a way huh, out of no way huh, somebody say yeah huh, somebody give God glory in the house today huh, if you can say I can't help huh, but to give God the praise huh, huh, what's my evidence huh, I'm still here huh, what's my evidence huh, still made it. What's my evidence? Through many dangers, toils and snares. I have already come. Was grace that brought me safe this far. And it's grace that's going to lead me on. Have I got somebody in the house that can give God glory? shouting right there but the challenge is that if I keep shouting right there I'm gonna miss the last thing and I told you Lord have mercy that if you've got the evidence and a word Lord have mercy it can help you along your journey and this is your word you see what blows my mind when I look at this and what the Lord told me to whisper to you is that just next chapter will lead to a new era good God Almighty this next chapter and let me let me say this way God isn't just turning the page to a new chapter God's turning the page to a new book God's not just turned the page to a new chapter. God's not just turned the page to a new book. God's turning the page to a new volume of books. See, I got my See, all over the sports world, they've been talking about, we think something special is happening right now with women's sports. And they say, we think it's more than just that game. But what we think is, it is going to be a whole move in which now the women, good God Almighty, had better viewership than the brothers. And if the women had better viewership than the brothers, then it's going to make sense. They're going to start getting better TV deals than they used to get. Now, uh, they had to remind us that a few years ago at the Final Four, when they had, there was a big, there was a big scandal when they showed the weight room of the men versus the weight room of the women. Because the men had all this stuff and the women had just a little bit of stuff. But they ended up fighting a fight back then 
to get there to be some equality in the stuff. Got equality in the stuff. And the sisters now have snatched, good God Almighty, the viewership and the attention at such a level that most people would say that what happened in this game was not just another game, but it was a changing into a new era. When I look, the shift, thank you so much. Oh, you can come preach it with me, the shift. Oh, oh, turn to your neighbor and say, it's a shift. It's a shift happening, right? Good God Almighty, it's a shift. It's a shift. It's a shift. It's a shift. It is a shift. Good God Almighty, I feel it in the Holy Ghost. I feel it in the atmosphere. There's a shift happening in your life. Good God Almighty. See, see. When the women went to the tomb, Lord have mercy, and when they came back to talk to the men, even though the men didn't believe, the shift had already taken place. That even though the men didn't believe, good God Almighty, the women, good God Almighty, were finding their way into the new volume. Oh, okay, y'all got your Bibles, right? In your Bibles, you've got the Old Testament. And you've got the New Testament. Back in that time period, when they went to church, they would read out the Torah. They, they, they would read, Lord have mercy. And they would talk about uh, 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 the, the laws of the prophets. That's the Old Testament. But when Jesus got resurrected, Lord have mercy. Uh, they, they had to bring up not just a new book, but a New Testament, Lord have mercy. Because there was a shift. There was a shift that shifted time. It shifted the calendar to the point in which everything up till then uh, uh, now became before Christ. And everything after that became good God Almighty, Anno Domini. The, 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 there was a shift, good God Almighty, uh, that by his resurrection, uh, it caused a shift, good God Almighty, uh, between the old and the new. Uh, that because, good God Almighty, uh, of what was happening in that moment, uh, there was a shift uh, from what used to be uh, to what would be. Uh, and those sisters uh, didn't find themselves written in the Old Testament, Lord have mercy. But they found themselves written in the New Testament because of the shift. I'm trying to talk to somebody here today because you got to understand the testament means covenant, and you got the old covenant, and you've got the new covenant. And sometimes when there's a shift, the shift isn't just about stuff becoming new, but the new helps to make sense of the old. That every prophecy in the Old Testament came together through Jesus. And that's how we got the New Testament huh? because of the shift. Huh? Somebody in the house today huh? that because of the shift that God is doing in your life, huh? God's allowed your old stuff. Huh? It's gonna make sense huh? that God's about to do something new in you, huh? and you're gonna realize that everything huh? that you've been through. Huh? Every mistake huh, that you've ever made, huh, every challenge huh, that you've ever had huh, is going to start to make sense huh, because all things huh, work together huh, for the good of them huh, that love the Lord huh, and are the called huh, according to his purpose. Huh, but can I help somebody up in here? Huh, all things huh, are passed away huh, and behold, huh, all things have become brand new. Have I got somebody up in here that can give God glory for the shift? Your next chapter is gonna be your best chapter. Your next chapter is gonna be your best chapter. Your next chapter is gonna be saying. Stand all over the church, all that are. Yes, Somebody shout shift. Somebody shout it like you feel it. Shift. A 
Oh, come on, somebody shout it like you feel it shift. If you believe it for yourself, give God glory for the shift. Hey. So, this. here is some of your evidence. You're in the middle of the shift. Because people in your life keep saying you think you brand new. You're acting new. You're changing on me. It's the shift. Don't you try to argue with them to tell them you ain't brand new. Tell them, wow, well, I'm glad you recognize. I can't tolerate what I used to tolerate. Because there's been a shift. It's been a change in me. Old saints used to say, the things I used to do, I don't do no more. Places I used to go, I don't go no more. I looked at my hands and my hands looked new. I looked at my feet and they did too. Because there's been a what? Old saints would sing a song say, I went to a meeting one night. And my heart wasn't right. But something got a hold on me. Listen. If you're in the house, I'm gonna do this a little differently. And you feel I was preaching directly to you. Not kinder to you. There'll be some you felt, the Reverend, that was a good word, and so that's wonderful, that's wonderful. And, and we give God glory because it's not gonna hit everybody the same exact way. But there are at least 21 folks in here that I was preaching directly to you. The situation, your life right now, and you need God to give you focus for this season of transition. Make your way to the altar right now that you make your way to the altar. Oh, oh, oh. 
do me a favor. I know it's going to sound old, and I hope you know it. Something got a hold of me, but the slow way. Something got a hold of me. Oh, yes, it did one day. Something got a hold yes. of me. Y'all going to hear me sing. I went to a meeting one night. I went to a meeting one night. And my heart. And my heart was right. To something. To something. Got a hold. Got a hold. On me. On me. Some of y'all been in church a long time. Because y'all know this song. Y'all help us sing it. Something. Got a hold. A hold. Got a hold on me. Oh, yes, it did. Oh, yes, it did. One something. something. Got, Got a hold, a hold. on me. me. Yeah. I went to a meeting one night. And my heart. Wasn't right. wasn't right. Something. I, something. Got a hold. Got a hold on, on, me. on me. Come on, I want y'all to sing this with me. I need you to feel me. Yeah. Say something. Say something. Got a hold. Got a hold on me. On me. Yeah. Oh yes, it did. Oh yes, it did. One day something. Got a hold oh, on me. me yeah. Went to a meeting and my heart and my heart was right. It's something. softly for me so I can hear myself among this. The reason I asked him to sing that is because sometimes we need to go back to the old landmark. Sometimes that may not be the song that you sang, but somebody, when you heard it, it was a song your mama sang. It was a song your grandmama sang. It was a song you heard the old saints sing. And I've come by to let you know that the same God that got them through is the same God that's going to get you through. It's not a new God. The same God that you watched get them through their hardest heartbreaks and their roughest seasons. The same God, good God Almighty, that's going to get you through this season to the other side. So in the middle of this shift, I need you to hold on to God. In the middle of this shift, I need you to hold on to the one that held on to you and know that the Lord will make a way somehow. So I'm going to have us sing this one more time, but I need you to sing it like you know it. I'm going to give you the words. Are y'all with me? All over the church. Something, something got a hold, got a hold on me. I went to a meeting one night. I went to a meeting one night. And my heart wasn't right. And my heart wasn't right. And something. Something. Got a hold. Got a hold. On me. Let me pray for you. It was the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Yeah. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, yeah. 
We pray for you. Holy Ghost. God, in Jesus' name, we give you glory for your people who are in transition. We give you glory, God, for your people who are in the midst of the shift. And right now, in the name, Lord Jesus, we ask, God, that you would grab a hold of us, my God, Jesus. God, grab us and don't let us go. God, help us, God, in this moment to have focus. Help us not to allow our emotions and our triggers to get us out of position for what you have for us. God, in Jesus' name, the enemy would try to push our buttons to get us to react and move in directions that are not of you. But I thank you, God, today that I'm asking and I'm begging you to hold on to us, God, even when we're trying to go in the wrong direction. Hold on to us, God, even when we don't believe in ourselves. Hold on to us, God, even when the burden seems too heavy. God, hold on to us, God, and don't let go. In the midst of our grief, God, hold us. In the midst of our sickness, God, hold us. In the midst of our heartbreak, God, hold us. In the midst, God, of challenges on our jobs and in our families, God, hold us. God, hold us, good God Almighty. And if you hold us, God, we'll be all right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Come on, somebody give God a hand clap of praise right where you are. Don't move, don't move just yet, don't move just yet. Listen, if you've never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, whether you're here, whether you're viewing us on Facebook or YouTube or, or, or Roku or Apple TV or Fire TV or Google TV, wherever you're viewing us from, uh, we want to thank God. God has a plan for you. If you've never accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life, we want to thank God that they shall put up the prompt right there on the video. If you've never accepted Jesus, here at Community of Hope, we say it every Sunday, we're the Community of Hope where everyone has a chance. We don't care who you are, what you've done, or who you did it with. We don't care if you did it last night and woke up doing it this morning. When you get here, you're in the right place at the right time to become all that God has called you to be. And we believe that God's got a blessing with your name. The Bible says God loved the world so much he gave his only son. Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. If you've never accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life, you can't make it through the shift without him. Because Jesus literally is a GPS to show you how to get where you've never gone. Don't tell me, Reverend, I got to get my life in order. I got to get myself together before I get right with God. You can't get yourself together. You've been trying it all your life. The reality is you give your life to Christ, the free gift. And Jesus helps work out your soul salvation. Jesus helps work out your sanctification. Jesus helps do a work in you. Not because you're so good, but because he's so good. And he can make all the difference, all the change in your life. Don't you tell me, Reverend, I've lived too foul. If you saw some of the testimonies at this altar, you'd come running. You just wouldn't run on the same side as them. Because of their testimony. But the reality is, all have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. If you're looking for a church of perfect people, when you find it, it won't be perfect anymore. But if you're looking for a church of folks who are trying to serve God better today than we did yesterday, be better by God tomorrow than we are today. You're in the right place at the right time. So one, if you've never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, or two, if you don't have a church home and you want a church home, what I want you to do is I want you just to lift up your hand right now. Lift up your hand right now. If that's you, if that's you, if that's you. I see your hand. I see your hand. Y'all lift it up high. I see your hand. Lift it up high wherever you are. I see your hand. Lift it up high wherever you are. I see your hand. God bless you. God bless you. Now listen, I'm going to need you all to help me.
because there's more in the house and I'm clear about it, but also online and watching us, viewing us. If you're watching us uh, virtually, uh, you can just text the word hope decision, one word, hope decision, to the number 77411. It's right there on your screen. Text hope decision to 77411. A link will come up and you can be able to fill that form out and we will pray with you and believe in God's greatness for you. I want you all to help me here at the altar. Don't leave because I don't want folks to have to keep walking back and forth. Watch. At the altar and wherever you are, I want you, when I say go, to find ooh, seven people. That's right, seven people. And ask them, are they saved and do they need a church? Right? And tell them, look, I'll walk down there with you. I got your back. I'll make sure you're good. And that person, whoever raised their hand, I want y'all to start making your way down right now. Come on, one, two, three, go, go, go. Find seven folks. Ask them, hey, neighbor, are you saved? Are you at a church? Are you saved? Do you have a church? Tell them, I I'll walk down there with you. I I'll walk down. Are you saved? Do you have a church? If they want to come down with you, just raise your hand so I see you coming. Just raise your hand so I see you coming and make your way down here. Amen. Did my minister been with this sister right here? Here goes one right here. My minister's right here. Should we have those are praying here? God bless you. We see you here. Hmm? Yeah, he's here. Oh, oh, Minister Roy already prayed with her. My bad. Minister Roy's already on it. I'm sorry. Reverend Roy. Reverend Roy. Amen. Reverend Roy's already handled it. My bad. My apologies, ministerial staff. Y'all was on it way better than I thought. Amen. They G's. They gangsters. Amen. 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 I want everybody to stretch your hands right here to the altar, to our sister here, sister here. I just want you, and everybody just repeat, and those who are joining us and those who are uh, coming part of the fellowship online, I just repeat after me, say, God, I thank you for Jesus who died for me and you raised from the dead that I could be saved. God, please forgive me for my sins. I don't want to live that way anymore. And right now, I ask Jesus to come into my heart in control of my life. I want to live the way you want me to live. Be the person that you've called me to be. So today, I thank you. I'm saved. Got a church home. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Ministers, I want you to stay connected to her. I'm about to give benediction right here. Y'all don't even have to move because I'm going to give benediction right here. I'm going to give benediction right here. I want to shout out, we see Reverend Glenda Hodges in the house with us. Amen. God bless you, our dear sister and friend. Amen. They was partying down the joint. They good. They all right. Amen. Come on, let's look to God in the closing word of prayer. Y'all make sure, get your neighbor, your friend, everybody out here next Sunday, 18th anniversary. Amen. 18th anniversary. I look forward to see you. Come on, let's look to the Lord in the, in the word of prayer. God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide now, henceforth, and forever among your people. In other words, God, may you walk with us, may you talk with us. May you live in us that we can live for you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. I'll be blessed to shake your hand at the door. God bless you today.